typically as a weapon. Because you hear that often talk about how praise is a weapon. You all see people say things along the lines of uh, praise confuses the enemy, which is not a, a forthright biblical statement, but it is very true. Very true. Because of various other passages in scripture that talks about it. Like all of a sudden the praises were praising and the enemy was confused. And we're going to talk about that. So it's not a statement that the Bible just says forthright. Mm -hmm. However, it is something that is clearly strongly back in Scripture. And we'll talk about some of that too. So we're focusing more so on praise as a weapon. So you can write that down if you want as a, a focal point today. We will let the conversation go as it needs to go. We'll do a little bit of review. And I'm going to check in with some homework. But before that, let's just uh, pray for a second or two. Um, so if you could just posture your hearts for a second. Jesus, Jesus, Holy Spirit, move here, open our eyes. Open our ears, let us see you, let us touch you, let us hear you my Lord, my Lord. To embrace the weak things, the weak things that has power in the spirit, Lord. Our power is in you. Our confidence is in you. You are our warrior, our fortress and strong tower, you are. So let's look at a few things. Praise is a weapon. This is chapter three. Before we jump into the praise is a weapon, chapter three part, um, just want to again um, do a couple reviews. We had a lot of pretty strong statements last class. I'm going to share a few of those highlighted statements um, for those who were not here um, for that class. Um, uh, we were talking about entering into the presence of the Lord and what did that mean in light of God being omnipresent? Like, how do we enter the presence of the one who's everywhere all the time at the same time? You know, we talked about that. We talked about the power of uh, when two or three are together, um, God is in the midst. We talked about the glory cloud of presence and the slight differences between those and how sometimes people feel as though if there was not a glory cloud, then it did not matter, and that is not true. The Lord really inhabits the praises of his people because obviously as finicky and fickle as we are, for any two of us to come together to pray or to praise a true, truly extraordinary feat, it's only because the Lord does it. Because we, we're just not inclined to do it. It's just we're just not that good. Um, however, but because of the Lord, that's clearly the evidence that he's always in the midst of us. Uh, we also focus on the fact that there was no formula with worship. It's not about two fast songs and a slow song. <laughs> One fast song and two slow songs, or all slow or all fast. None of those, it's none of that really matters as it pertains to that. It's more so tied into us drawing in by the Spirit of the Lord um, and, uh, and us worshiping in spirit and truth, just like it says in, uh, uh, is it John 4? I keep messing up either John 4 or Luke 4. I'm pretty sure it's John 4. 
where Jesus is talking to the woman of the well. You guys are aware or familiar with the reference, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yes, it's John 4. And Jesus reminds her of the fact that the Father is looking for those who are worshiping in spirit and in truth. And we focus on that saying that being in spirit is to in, in involve your emotions. It's things that are a bit abstract, hard to understand. And then the truth side is being concrete. You can't say, oh, I'm feeling I'm in the spirit, so your emotions are all in, but yet you have no actions to follow. And you cannot say, I'm doing all these things for the benefit of the Lord, yet you're, um, while you're doing things, your heart is not involved. No, 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 no. You can't. You, it doesn't work that way. Women in the room can read that a mile away. A guy just does stuff. He's like, you're doing stuff, but you don't love me. <laughs> we know <laughs> there has to be an emotional tie, yeah. and there has to be a tangible tie. You can't say, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, and you do absolutely nothing. Exactly. You know, it doesn't work that way. You can't say you love the Lord and you don't share your faith. You can't say that you love the Lord and you are disobedient. The Bible is really clear about that. Do we know you guys have read, I'm sure the love languages book as well. And most people think about one of the Lord's love languages is, obe is obedience. Because he says like three times in, in uh, was it John 13, if you love me, you'll do what I say. And he says it like three different times, yes. three different ways. If you love me, you'll do as I say. So a love language is, hey, your obedience proves your love for the Lord. Amen. So therefore, when you're worshiping him in obedience or in spirit and in truth, it requires the tangible, the heartfelt emotions, as well as concrete actions that follow on you beating your flesh and that kind of deal. All right? Um, um, we focused a little bit on, this is a, a very important point, that we are focusing on uh, not the conjuring up of the presence of the Lord, like we're not trying to conjure things, like right. conjuring is not good, mm -hmm. like we're like we are not meant to come in and let the, the sound system and the skilled musicians and the singers and the tight harmonies and you know, the, the laser lights and the fog, but she, we are not trying to conjure the praise of the Lord okay, right. Right. now mind you, please take note, because I've done the concerts I've done the laser light shows with the pyrotechnics though it's mm -hmm. not very fun, a lot of people are like oh man, you're something that's, it's not fun man them tech guys, Judah, I'm sure knows. Have you been with them tech guys? The tech guys be like, off the stage, leave you on that shit. I'm like, yo, you guys, chill out. But it's because they got all them insurance things about the whatever they do. It gets real funny when they got those big stages. It's funny. It's not as, it's not always what it's cracked up to be. But I will say that uh, the presence of the Lord can still move in those settings. You know, I got Judah on my side over here who is very much a worshiper, but he's also very much a performer. And there's nothing wrong with being a performer, even in the context of church. Mm -hmm. There is a time and place for all those things. There's a time to be entertained. And there's also a time for worship. Just make sure you don't try to mix the two all the time. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If we're performing, we're going to have a good time. Let's perform and have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to bust up the laser light show and let that stuff run, not to say the presence can't move in that. But don't be distracted to think that the laser lights is the presence. Right. Wait, let the presence be the presence. Right. Let the laser lights and that super, you know, $100,000 sound system be the super $100,000 sound system. And be like, hey, I can say I'm feeling this. And you can just say I'm feeling it because it's it's a good show. Right. And that's all right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, we just be very careful not to just call it all the same thing because it's not. It's not. All right, and so again, we're talking about not conjuring because in conjuring, it's almost like the sorcery piece. We talked about the uh, um, uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal, and I was saying, hey, which one looked like they was really trying hard? And sure enough, it was those prophets of Baal. They was really trying. They was trying something. And they they were extravagantly worshiping their God. So much so that they was cutting themselves. It was extravagant. That's a big deal, Judah. Have you ever cut yourself on? I'm, I'm showing my love for Jesus. This blood was built and so was mine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm oh, sorry, but wow. that's extra is it not extravagant? Yeah. And, it's, it's, and you think about it, it's like, man, that's just, that's a just. I'm oh, sorry. That was funny, man. Don't like that, God. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. But those prophets of Baal, they, right. they really went, going in. They went in, but then they went in to no avail. Mm -hmm. And then you got Elijah coming in there, mm -hmm. and this dude did everything to hinder the move of the Lord. Did he not? He came in and poured water on the altar. I'm like, yo, that's like, you know, it's like I'm trying to snuff out the fire of the Lord right, because right. I'm trying to show you right. that the fire of the Lord is of his volition. And so he did his thing and all he did was just trust and obey. 
And so therefore, we have to make sure that we, like David, when we were talking about the Ark of the Covenant, and we're saying, hey, the presence of the Lord is to be how? How is it to be traveled with? How is it to be brought in? It was through the, the being carried by the priest. And so the presence of the Lord is carried. It's within you. They move the presence. It's not something we drive because they put it on those oxen and those cattle and they were driving the presence because it looks, you know, we're going to put the ark on the horses or ark on the oxen. We're going to put it on the masculinity of whatever the beasts of the field are. And we're going to say, God is mighty. And God's like, no, 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 no. Right? <laughs> it's in you mm -hmm. and you are to carry me. And so therefore... You get circumstances like even that happened earlier today, mm -hmm. you know, um, because it was really good uh, with Lauren leading worship and Judah playing the keys. Though I do wish that she did not bring any attention to the fact that there was no drummer. Mm -hmm. I just like, she doesn't need to do that. Okay. Because the fact of the matter is, it wasn't necessary. The I was in the back, mm -hmm. and I was feeling the presence of the Lord, mm -hmm. and he was there. Mm -hmm. So why do we have to be or draw attention to what's missing? Okay. Doesn't matter. Amen. If your hearts are ready, mm -hmm. you press in and you worship. Amen. We don't have to draw attention to what's there because in fact, the matter is always something that's that's not there or something that's missing or something that's broken because our enemy's at work. Mm -hmm. So if that's mm -hmm. the case, mm -hmm. we don't even draw attention to what he's doing because sometimes he wants us to draw attention mm -hmm. to things mm -hmm. to make it seem like right. things are just broken or out of order and mm -hmm. Lord's not in it because this person is here and mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. all is a lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, mm -hmm. because we carry the presence, if we have people willing to worship, the presence will be there. Amen. Does it make sense? Amen. You know, and, and sometimes it can get dangerous when we're trying to drive the machine. And I want us to make sure that we're not bent on driving the machine, but bent on worshiping the Lord regardless of what we have and giving him our offering and let him do with it as he will. Amen. And that's it. So we give him our offering and let him do it as he will. So again, my point was we do not want to try to conjure something and look for things to conjure. And again, I'm saying that, I, I said this already at least four different ways. I'm going to keep saying it. It does not mean that us being organized and having whatever planning centers or whatever itinerant, or itinerary or scheduling or service flow, all that stuff is fine and good. It shows good stewardship. But at the same time, when things go wrong, relax. God is ultimately in charge. You be faithful and steadfast. Okay, and let me just throw just one note about faithful and steadfast. I'm not sure if I talked about that much at all in previous classes. I learned about being faithful and steadfast from Michael Peace. He's a, uh, obviously you guys know he's an international uh, mm -hmm. hip hop artist. Um, he was the first hip gospel hip hop artist on our coast. Um, he has had his fingerprints on myself as well as Judah while we were growing up. We have a great deal of love and respect for him. You know, and he is considered the grandpa of holy hip hop because he was the first hip hop artist on our coast. He was the first. Sold like 50,000 copies the day before his album came out <laughs> on Threats of Society and various other albums. So he's a significant guy, though he's not doing the hip hop thing anymore because he's like, you know, he's like the run DMC. He's like old school, you know, so he's not doing it anymore, but he is still investing in the lives of people. But when he was telling me about um, uh, being faithful and steadfast, being faithful is just always being there. Now, church love, we got some people that are that are very, very faithful. We have some people that are faithful almost to a fault. It's very, very, it's a very strong characteristic of church love. It's a very, it's a beautiful characteristic of church love to be so faithful. Steadfast is slightly different, and a lot of us are steadfast, but we're not, we're not having a walk in the beauty of being steadfast. But I mean by the beauty of being steadfast. And steadfast means when things go wrong, you remember the fundamental reason why you're there. For example, with Mike Peace, he would say, hey, I need you guys to be faithful and steadfast. When he, taught, he was telling the worship team um, at Vanguard Embassy, he was like, can't really leave worship. He's like, you guys trust too much in your instruments and your ability. Mm -hmm. And we didn't understand what he meant. He said, I need you guys to <coughs> worship. And so what he did, he came over and he clicked the guitar mm -hmm. strings and took the mm -hmm. drumsticks mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And this is like all like minutes before worship was supposed to start. And he said, all right, let's worship. And so he sabotaged the song, clipping mm -hmm. the strings, taking mm -hmm. the pedals, taking stuff, breaking stuff, mm -hmm. and sabotaged and said, go. And oh, obviously, he was like, Mike, what are you doing? You know, all confused. Now, mind you, he had all the stuff in his bag. Anyway. He gave us new sets of strings. We went worship was done. After we, <laughs> <laughs> after we suffered our way through. But he was saying, hey, 
when things go wrong, like if, if Judah was up on stage and all of a sudden the pedal malfunction or the keyboard just conked out and kept switching sounds on him, is Judah just going to get up and kick this keyboard over and walk off the stage? Or will he stay on stage and just worship because he recognizes that, hey, my hands is one piece of this, but my voice and my hands in the air is still another. And if something goes wrong here, hey, if the rest of the band is still in, I will contribute to the worship service by engaging my heart immediately right. with the rest. Amen. Amen. That's being steadfast. You remember Amen. the yes. focus as to why you're here. Amen. So if the amp conks out, you don't just be like, oh, I'm all about the spirit. <laughs> right. Well, mind you, you can recognize that, man, something's wrong. Yeah, acknowledge something's wrong. But immediately once you recognize something's wrong, step back and say, why am I here? What am I here for? And that, I'm using a stage example. That can also happen in various other respects, even if you're not on the stage. Let's say you're coming into church and somebody says something to you that's kind of got you kind of crossing the parking lot. We know what happens, right? Yeah. And somebody looks at us the wrong way or they, they beefing about something and we are just confused. Like, why in the world is that usher so rude? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you are now taken up, for lack mm-hmm. of a better term, out the spirit. Mm-hmm. And now you're trying to worship and you can't focus. Yes. So yes. be steadfast. Mm-hmm. Wait, why am I here again? Mm-hmm. Okay, and our enemy is consistently at work Mm -hmm. to distract us, all right? Amen. So those are the things that we kind of talked about a little bit. Um, And uh, right now, actually, before I look at some of the rest of the notes from last week, let's, because that makes a very sweet segue into praise being a weapon. And I want to ask you guys, if you can think of, I'm not expecting you guys to give me all the scripture and verse, but can you think of, Passages where praise was used specifically as a weapon. Because we talk about it often. We need to know where the circumstance is in the Bible and also consider the context of the circumstance because that's going to help us a ton with leading worship. I can't remember the scripture, but when the, they sent the women forth with the tambourines and the, and the praise and worship before the. Right after the cross of the Red Sea? That's the cross of the Red Sea. Okay. Yes, that was a very, that's an excellent example. That's an excellent example. So, again, praise being a weapon. So, they crossed the Red Sea. So, where was the weapon? How was the weapon used? Who was the weapon? What happened? What was the other backstory there? Well, that was Miriam. Well, you have to take a step back. That's her result. After. Where was the, what was the battle? It's between the Israelites and uh, Egyptians. Oh, you know. Egyptians. Yes. And so... Who defeated the Egyptians? Well, God did. God did. How did he defeat the Egyptians? By closing up the Red Sea. He closed the Red Sea. Now, that was a, just so you know, that's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Okay? We got to really look at the Bible carefully and really think through how big of a deal that was. All right? First, you're talking over a million people walking across a sea. It's an open sea. And they, the Bible says that there was a wall of water on each side. Now, some uh, it's funny. We had these scientists that came out and said, oh, the, the Red Sea was only like three feet deep. I said, hey, listen. I said, y'all can say it was three feet deep. I ain't even going to argue with you. Right? Yeah. No, I think that's a lie. I'm not going to argue with you that the Red Sea was three feet deep. And he's saying that they kind of, kind of waded through the water. Mm. Hey, whatever. You still got a man on a horseback on horseback that drowned in three feet of water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the horseback. So obviously, it's not even like the man's six feet tall. The man is even higher than that right. on the ground. Mm-hmm. And he's drawn <laughs> and three feet of water. <laughs> yeah, no. So Miracle, you okay? You still <laughs> lose. I'm sorry, you guys. You still lose. It's a big deal. And people have actually studied and found that there were horse remains, cherry remains, gold, and stuff like that at the bottom of that sea. I'm like, well, how did that get there? Mm. How did it get there? Mm. You know, so people can say whatever they want to say, but I'm like, yo, they people went down there and they found the stuff. Okay. Right. Right. So we know this happened. It was a big deal because you still had God Himself drown an army. You also have to consider that as fast as those people was moving, they were moving kind of slow. How are you gonna get uh, over a million plus people right. to cross that? Right. They're going slow. They was like, "Oh, we done." Right. We, they, that was what's going on in their heads. We're right. dead. <laughs> then we are sitting ducks, and yet they crossed that thing, and the Lord blocked them off. Mm-hmm. And then He let them go in due season. They probably looked up and saw these people about at least like a, a mile in front of them. It was like there was some distance. And they were able to turn around and watch the Lord himself miraculously crush and defeat their enemies. Yeah. So now you're seeing 
the praise and the trust of God as a weapon. And that was an acknowledgement of it. It was after the fact, but it was an acknowledgement. What else? Give me another example. So you, you see what I'm looking for. You've yeah, got to look at the whole picture to see how the praise is part of the weapon. Yes. Um, the wall of Jericho, in the case where they sounded a trumpet. Amazing example. Yes. Shouted in the wall. Yes. 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 God, that was clearly the Lord. I'm like, since when do we make a, a pitch and things come falling down? Right. You know? <laughs> and they walk up in there and they crushed those guys. Crushed. No one. And then on top of that, there was one woman that helped them spies and everybody is crushed except her and her family. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That was the Lord. And they knew it was the Lord. <clears throat> everybody knew that that city could not be stopped and it struck fear in everybody. Yeah. Give me another example. Um, I can't remember where, but. I think it was the Philistines coming against Israel and basically the Lord instructed one of the prophets to send the praisers out first. Yep. Um, I can't yep. remember where it is, though. Um, that's the one I was talking about. Oh, that's what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's the one I was talking so about. We're going to mix them all together. We're okay. going to mix them all together. You're saying what was Jehoshaphat? That was Jehoshaphat. That's, yeah, that's what it was. It was Jehoshaphat. Yes. Okay. Is that what exactly you're pulling out of the book? Okay. Just so you know, he actually illustrates a bunch of these, almost all of them, right in a row in the book. Yeah. And so, yes. Yep. Jehoshaphat was another one. Mm -hmm. And that was, again, seemed foolishness. The guys showed up with their swords only to put them down and go collect the spoil. Right. It's yeah, like. Three days. Mm -hmm. It took them three days to collect. Hey, y'all, it took them three days to collect all the money. Mm -hmm. And all the wealth and all the spoil. Mm -hmm. That's just a lot of stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff. So now we got all these examples roaming around our heads. The ones that I think of are the ones that I feel like they touch home to a little bit more. So I think of stuff like Paul and Silas in jail. Uh, That's one, yes. You know, yeah. they're locked up, chained in prison. <laughs> they start praising, the chains fall off, and then not only the chains fall off, the jailer and his entire family comes to know the, comes to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Through all that. Mm -hmm. Now that, I'm like, man, these are significant. Now, Let's take a step back. Because well, can I say something before you finish? Please, please. Mate, please. You remember how in the beginning you were saying that we praise God in spite of the circumstances? Yes. Because with Paul and Silas, they could have just like felt pity aside for themselves and not praise God. But yep. instead, they overlook their circumstances and praise Him in spite of the mm -hmm. circumstances. So, yep. as far as we use it as an example, we're going through. Things we have to lay that aside and still praise God no matter what. Yes. In the good times and the bad times. Now, let me show you, give a secret to that. Now, this is actually the point that I want to write in a little bit about how praise confuses the enemy. Okay? Actually, if you think about it, praise not only confuses the enemy, it can even confuse the righteous and the sanctified. Yes. Mm -hmm. Think yes. about it. Let's say, let's put you out there and say you were the one that was going through all kinds of hell and everybody watched it. Mm -hmm. And they are expecting you to fall on the floor and fall out because of your life being a spectacle of what Satan <coughs> was doing to crush you. And yet, instead of voicing your complaints, instead of kicking and screaming or falling into a woe is me -ism, out of your mouth comes, Lord, mm -hmm. naked I came into this world and naked I'm, I'm gonna leave. Glory be to your name, as Job said. Yes, yes. You say something along those lines. Now, even the righteous is like, whoa. And it's like they're confused. It's like, man, I need that. <laughs> right? Or sometimes, even for some of us who are trying to fight for the Lord or to fight to know the Lord, we look at that and it was like, Lord, that was beautiful, but I don't even want to do that. I, 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 I ain't trying to go through that. I ain't even trying to go through that. <laughs> I don't want to. No. You know, think yeah. about it. Is it not true? Yeah. So yeah. now you see the power of that praise confusing the enemy. Because think about it, the enemy comes upon men all the time. The men. They slam men all the time. They use <laughs> the same weapons because they're effective on men all the time. And we see people who are even at the top, ministers that are world known, world known, yes. complaining, falling, beefing, having all kinds of words. And then all of a sudden they come on you and they throw something at you. And instead of being like everybody else, you say, Lord, Thank you, according to James chapter 1, mm -hmm. I'm going to count it all joy when I'm faced with evil and diverse trials and tribulations. For the trying of my faith worketh patience. And to allow the patience that is perfect work within us that we may be perfect and entire one to nothing. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That he smiled on me mm -hmm. to consider me worthy to endure this. Mm -hmm. Because for the righteous, 
they recognize that God is in all things. They do. They recognize it. And they are not ashamed by it. I say that God is in all things. Like even in, like, I, some people say it all the wrong way when they talk about, oh, the, the, that tornado or that hurricane was the judgment of the Lord. And some people say it in the wrong spirit, but I know confidently that was the Lord. The Lord's always in it. I don't always agree with everybody's reasoning. And I think it's wrong for us to judge it appropriately and say, oh, Florida will send it. And there they go. That's because they'd be wearing them, that inappropriate stuff in the match. I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Will you stop? It's dumb, right? But it's still clear to say the Lord was in it. Let us all repent. Let us all check ourselves. And let us all get down there and give them aid. Yes. Stop it. Yes. Don't worry about all the other nuances. And so if we say, I'm aware that God is in it all, because guess what? It does not matter whether or not they were the righteous or the sinful. Sometimes bad happens just because sin is in the world. Right. Period. Amen. That's it. And Amen. look at Job. Job, the Bible says right there in chapter 1 of Job, that Job was innocent. Mm -hmm. He was righteous yes. and a blameless man. Yes. And God allowed him to lose everything. Why? Because he's trying to slam that argument everything. that people make to state that good things always happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. And that's how it endures. says, no. Mm -hmm. And Jesus himself, when he was walking on earth, did the exact same thing with his disciples and apostles. When they said, hey, was this man sin or his parents sin as to why he was born blind? And Jesus said, neither. And so that God can get the glory. So sometimes the junk that you're enduring, because again, this is a evil principality battle. Mm -hmm. You got it? We mm -hmm. worship. It's an mm -hmm. evil principality battle. Mm -hmm. Because Job was no more than a pawn in God proving a point. And who was he proving the point to? Mm -hmm. Satan. Yeah. So Satan is up there saying, I can make Judah curse you to his face. Mm -hmm. I can make Marshall curse you to his face. And he's going all around, I can make them curse. And God says, <clears throat> you can have them, but you can't take their life. Mm -hmm. And so Satan will come over and do whatever he can to cause you to curse God. Mm -hmm. Is it not the scenario? Amen. Yeah. Is it not yeah. what we see in scripture? Mm -hmm. And so when you say, I will praise God still, the enemy is now confused. Mm -hmm. Do you okay. see? Mm -hmm. And it just causes great confusion. That's why the Lord puts so many passages in there to remind us as to how our praise does not make sense, mm -hmm. including to other believers, which doesn't make sense sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if we are invested in the Lord, and we have chosen to wrestle with him and look at him and not be afraid or ashamed at what we see. Because again, a lot of times we have difficulty looking at the fact that God is both beautiful and terrible at the same time. And the scripture says so. It says it. And if we think about it, if we just think about men in general or women in general, is it not true that sometimes things can come off really harsh, but that's always in you, and it was a good thing that was in you? Mm -hmm. Think about it. I'll use Judas as, as, as a husband, right? Mm -hmm. Or some of you as mothers and fathers, right? <coughs> so we have a husband. Let somebody roll up on my man's wife. All of a sudden, this docile guy you mm -hmm. see, this peaceful guy, is going to Trans change. Yeah. Now, the fact of the matter is, that was right. always in and there. Right. Yeah. But, right. but it's, the, it's not needed to come out mm -hmm. if the circumstance does not merit it. Right. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. And so God is like, don't don't be mistaken. Mm -hmm. I am a God of war, mm -hmm. but I am not just gonna spill out wrath for the sake of spilling out wrath. Right. It needs to be <coughs> merited. Right. Yeah. If it's not merited, it's not gonna come out. There's no need for it. Like Sodom and But Gamora. it's still there. You said what? Like Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's but it's still there. Right. Think about it. we got men downstairs that are officers. Good grief, mm -hmm. man. If they're an officer, they're an officer. Mm -hmm. And that means they carry a level of authority mm -hmm. and wit and self-control mm -hmm. to seize in a situation a circumstance and to subdue a circumstance. Mm -hmm. And sometimes subduing a circumstance does not look pretty. Mm -hmm. But they can do it. Right. right. But that doesn't change, take away from their peaceful circumstance or their loving personalities. Mm -hmm. So we cannot get for you cannot separate God from that. He is a God of war. Yes. And we see that clearly through scripture as well. Yes. And as a God of war, what initiates his actions is our praise. You got it? Yes. Got it. And so we want to consider that our praise is a weapon. Can I I just want to say something and it doesn't have doesn't have anything to do with the praise and worship piece, but I I want to say thank you because I have a friend of mine who for years has said, how can you still speak to that man because of what he did to you? Mm -hmm. I said, I had to forgive him mm -hmm. because I'd have been a bit of heifer 
and I'm not. <laughs> and I was for a while, and just like I don't like that about me. Yeah. So yeah. I gotta let it go. I gotta give him to the Lord, and we still hang out. We still talk, and I'm like that. And to, every t- even with uh, in the, within the last week, why do you even spend any time with that man? Mm-hmm. I had to let it go. Mm-hmm. Well, it even wrong. then, at the same time, mm-hmm. just like the Lord was trying to prove a point, mm-hmm. you can also be proving <clears> to <throat> him and to others who've harmed you. Right. You know. Yeah. And that point is, hey, this kind of behavior, again, makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So why do you think it's in me? And it draws people to the Lord. (coughs) That's the point. Because Mm -hmm. only God does these things. The point is to bring everyone to the place of the Lord, to draw people closer to the Father. When you are worshiping and when we're praising the Lord, again, it draws people into Him, and that's why we do it. Mm -hmm. And we have to consider that and think about that and have expectations about that as well. You know? And so, one more time, again, about praise, confusion, and envy, I want to throw this out there as something to think about, because we also have many explanations, like the first example we gave about Miriam and Moses and the women dancing and singing and praising in light of what the Lord has done. That kind of praise does not confuse the enemy, just so you know. The reason why that praise is not confusing the enemy is because it makes a whole lot of sense. Why are they praising? Didn't you just hear what the Lord just said? Right? right, right. <laughs> right? The praise that confuses the enemy, just so you get the context just right, is the praise that is lifted up while you're still in the midst of the hell. That's the praise that confuses the enemy because you're still enduring. Remember the example I gave was about Paul and Silas? They were not set free when they started worshiping and praising. They just did it. When you consider Job, Job also was not, he, good grief, the man was right at the beginning of the nonsense. And he opened his mouth and said, I will praise the Father. I will praise my God. And he rebuked his wife and said, should I only praise God when things are good and not when things are bad? And so that is the praise that confuses. Because I promise you, Satan went right back up to heaven and God said, so, what about Job? Did he do that? I he like made it I... very clear who Job's fan was. Mm-hmm. Who was Job's fan? God. God, and that messes us up. And we think about it in that context. Job was, or God was Job's fan. I am a fan of Job. Look at him. And guess what? Sometimes the hell you endure only shows that God is fond of you. And the thing is, we don't always think about that. I could see that now. But is it not true? Think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. God loved Jesus. And the Bible says that the same love that Jesus had for God was the same that God had for Jesus, that the Spirit had for Jesus, and it's the same love that God had for us. It is strong. It is perfect, that love. And yet, at the same time, in the midst of that love, the Scripture says that it pleased the Father to crush his son. And so when we think about that picture, it pleased the Father to crush crush him and it wasn't because he just was happy to crush him it was because he knew the result the result of the crushing was going to be what qualified Jesus to stand at the right hand of the father and to be ultimately the propitiation for our sins to be the sacrificial lamb he qualified himself in the midst of his willingness to be crushed you also are qualified when the scripture speaks of being perfect that perfection is also tied into the maturing of your faith to say I will worship in the midst of this hell I will worship because of who you are not because of my circumstances my circumstances are sometimes may hinder but at the same time (laughs) I will be obedient because you are worthy. And again, you see the, the for lack of a better term, the Easter eggs that are laid out through the scriptures of mm-hmm. all the other saints that were there before us. Mm-hmm. And what did the saints say before? We have Paul giving us things like, hey, these present trials and circumstances will not compare to the eternal light of glory that is to come. And so he and Paul would do some stuff. Mm-hmm. And yet he said, these momentary light afflictions don't compare. I'm like, momentary light, bro. <laughs> you wrote stuff. You call that stuff momentary and light. Mm-hmm. All the junk that he went through, mm-hmm. and so it gives us a framework. If we look at the scriptures, and we are not overly consumed by our culture, 
Because again, a lot of our <coughs> attitudes, and the definition of an attitude is a learned behavior. We learn to respond to certain things because that's what everybody else does. My husband leaves me. Oh, woe is me. My kids is walling out. Oh, woe is me. Or this problem, that oh, woe is me. As opposed to glory be to the name of the Lord. Father, thank you for either the things that I did that were wrong and that you showed me that I was wrong and you gave me a way out. Or Lord, thank you for showing me the heirs of my children and showing me the maturity of the love that you put in me that I will love my kids despite the foolishness that they're doing. Mm. Or Lord, thank mm. you for the nonsense that goes on at my job because it gives me an opportunity to be a light in a dark place because mm. you called me to Ooh, be Lord. a city on a hill. So you look at all of these things. <laughs> Wow. Sorry. But you're looking at them right in context of a worshiper. This is what makes a worshiper worship in spirit and truth. And Ooh, they Lord. do these things regardless to where they go. Wherever they are, they worship. Not just on the stage, not just in the sanctuary, but even at their job. You have this attitude to say, Lord. And it's not something we just say, like, oh, bless the Lord. And while I'm bless right. the Lord. No, no, no. Right. It's, right. It's, right. Y'all know exactly right. what we're talking about. Right. Some people do stuff. Like, oh, bless right. the Lord. They come down and call us. Bless the Lord. Right, right, right. 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 Come right. on, now. y'all know this. Right. We know the stuff, right? right? And that is not real at all. Right. Right. It's not. But yeah. when you have a genuine, subtle resolve to believe in the power of God, mm. and you continue to plead the blood over those people and say, Lord, if they don't get themselves right before you, they are damned to hell. Father, I ask that you open their eyes yes, that they too may see you. Yeah. Now you're stepping into praising him appropriately, <clears throat> worshiping him appropriately, worshiping him in sobriety. Mm -hmm. You're not infected by, you know, some of these weird nonsensical cultures mm -hmm. that the enemy has caused that mixes in a lot of the truth, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's still ultimately a lie mm -hmm. because there's something that anchors you. And so therefore, praise is a weapon. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it could, but when you, you have to understand it to see it as the weapon because if you don't understand how it has been laid out in scriptures and you see how it results and also see the circumstances again that's why i call it that circumstance with paul or that circumstance with job or various other circumstances where men praised while they were still shackled while they still were tormented while they were still in the mess and then <coughs> god make sense mm -hmm. and that's what you want then god because again it does please the father to press you because how else, how else can you show the significance of the love that he deposited in you? Right? Mm -hmm. There's no way to know. You don't know how strong love is, right? Isn't that true? We've learned how strong, like I, for, I'll use a, a, a very tender circumstance with my own wife, where I did not know how strong she was until I did something that harmed her, and I knew it harmed her dearly, and to see how quickly she was willing to forgive and to restore me. That was one of the things that caused me to be very aware of the strength of the love that that woman had for me. Amen. Does it make sense? Amen. But if everything's always good, <coughs> how am I supposed to know what our love can weather? Right. 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 And so the Lord says, I, it's, it's actually a must. It's a must. According to Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, it's a must that you are persecuted for the sake of the Lord. It's a must. Mm -hmm. You have to. But you praising in that is evidence, and it's the clearest and surest way to know whether you are his or not. Mm. Amen. When people cannot praise, well, I can't praise, I ain't going to church, well, you are not his, honestly. Mm. And you can't say that, no, I'm still the Lord, and I'm just not going to do it. That's just not how it's supposed to actually be. And I pray that you come to sobriety about what you are saying and what it means about this life that we say that we hold to. And so the scriptures say that um, the the way is narrow. Yes. And few find it. Why? Because they believe all these other lies. I can be this way and be this way and it's still okay. And it is not. Yeah. Yes, sir. Which leads me to an interesting subject. So it's, it's an argument I've had with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very, very, um, we don't really talk about it a lot in the church. And it's um, <coughs> saying, well, like being gay. 
Oh, homosexual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do we have about that? And, well, it's just the like the fact of what you said is just that like they don't feel like it's a choice, but at the same <clears throat> time, like they want to love God, mm -hmm. but also feel like they still want to do what they want to do. And so like oftentimes <clears throat> I'm finding myself saying, listen, it is a choice. And that's what makes the most sense in my brain. It's a choice of doing what you want mm -hmm. or doing what God wants. And what you're saying makes a lot of sense to me even now is because trying to be obedient to the voice of God, even though you might feel or have interests that mm -hmm. are natural or unnatural yeah. or like, like you're naturally attracted to the same sex, but you choose to go after God mm -hmm. instead of choosing what, what you want is kind of showing your love for him is kind of like what I'm hearing because that's kind of the argument that I've been having and people just are not comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Well, back then, <clears throat> there's a few the things. Flesh. When it comes out to homosexuality, I try to be very tender about it yeah, because very people tender. lose, they lose certain things in the midst of the arguments because the fact of the matter is if we want to be honest and just in the sake of time, this is going to be the last point. Um, but I'm glad you brought up the question, especially in light of worship, and especially in light of where our culture is going. Our culture is saying this is okay. Let me be, put it right on the record, it is not okay. Um, but let me also throw a couple of things out there to, to bring clarity as to how we're supposed to look at this. Now, first things first, we have to recognize that all of us have sinful proclivities. All of us do. I personally have never had any issue with homosexuality. It does not mean that I have not had issues with lust. Does not mean that I had not had issues with other areas. Some of us, our sinful proclivities are other places. Bitterness, unforgiveness, lies, pride. It's but it's all damnable. And the scriptures are clear. The Bible even throws out there in Rome or in Revelation, it even throws out being a coward. So therefore, you choose not to say something to somebody, well, I'm just trying to be a peacemaker. That ain't no peacemaker, you're being a coward. And the Lord says, I'm throwing them in hell too. I said, Good Lord. So we <laughs> It's the same for everybody else. Everybody has to grind against the grain of how they feel like they're wired. Mm -hmm. Because we're all wired differently, but we're all wired sinful. Mm -hmm. And so it's always going against the grain. It's just that they're being vocal about homosexuality. But the fact of the matter is, is it not the same with everybody else? I'm sure the person who's cowardly wants to make sure they seem like, oh, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. I'm really, And they, they convince themselves that they're doing good because they're keeping peace. And the Lord still says, off no. to hell. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, do, do you see the point? Mm -hmm. And so therefore, our responsibility is to lovingly encourage them mm -hmm. that the Father does love, and their responsibility is still to fight against their sin. Amen. That's the point. Amen. Because that's the truth. Mm -hmm. People get, they, And I, I get really frustrated when people want to go out there and they do certain things to bash various sinners. Whether yes. it's the single mom, yeah. the gay guy, yeah. or whatever. They just bash everybody. And I'm like, you have lost the point. The Lord loves all. <laughs> Period. However, I do have a problem with the person on the other side saying, God loves me and I don't need to change. I said, actually, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because on the other side, it's not God's love that gets you to heaven. It's not. God loves the world. That includes the rapist, the sexual immoral, immoral guy, the, the child ped, uh, pedophile. He loves everybody because he says so. But the fact of the matter is, heaven is not for them. It's for those who have chosen to love God. That's the other side. Mm, so right. you can't say God loves me. You can't judge me. I'm saying, wait, wait, wait. But it's not about his love. We already know that. God does love you. Mm -hmm. But the question is, are your actions showing your love for him? Mm -hmm. Because that's what's in there. 
if you're not showing that you love God by fighting your sin, sin and pursuing him, heaven is not your home. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah, and yeah. God the Father is not your God. That's quite simply it. It's, we're not arguing about whether God loves you. People want to come over there and they say, well, God loves him and God hates him. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, oh, a, that's not true. That's not true. That's above your pay grade. You can't oh. state <laughs> who God loves Amen. and who God hates. Yeah. You just can't. That's that's that God is God. He has his own emotions, his own personality, and he chooses who he will show mercy to mm -hmm. and who he will judge. Amen. And I promise you, at the end of the day, we will all be shocked. Mm -hmm. This is the way it is. Mm -hmm. So I don't state what God is, what he knows, what he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. I will state what, what I know in scripture says yes. that he loves the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. And therefore, if we want to get into heaven, then we love him. Mm -hmm. We align ourselves and respond to his love. That's how we do it. Quick question. I know it's getting long. Right. Go ahead. This whole section here that says a word from God. Explain, take like one minute to kind of explain this. Cause where are you? Where are you at? I'm on page 56. Yep. And I know says a word from God yep. about this praise and all that. It kind of seems like we've been also doing it the wrong timing. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's so a, are you talking about a prophetic word? Yeah, it says <coughs> that, um, where you at, girlfriend? It says the musician uh, can't take their place if the worship needs to arise and God's people lift their head, whatever. Then it goes on. But it, it, then it tells you, like, it says, like, um, we can also do it at a, do the praise at a wrong time without mm -hmm. a word from God. Yep. So how does that fit into all this whole thing about praise then? If we can we actually be doing it at a wrong time? There's time is, off. There's times for everything and there can be times where things can be off. That's always true with everything. And this as I'm looking at this in light of spiritual warfare. This one will probably take us a little bit of time to, to break into. <clears throat> so I'm going to highlight this section. Yeah, for us to end. Yep, yeah. I'll highlight this section. So this is 56. If you guys want, read that. It's only a couple pages, 56 and 57 of the book. It's only a couple paragraphs. I'm sorry. But we will start off our conversation discussing that. Okay. Now, so let me let me interject this. Mm -hmm. Our books are different. Like, this is the book I had when Bishop did this. Oh, my yeah. book is different oh, from Kim. So that's why I didn't understand what you had. I had that one, but I couldn't find it. I had a new one. What you see, Bishop? I can't find it. I think I had it on the front. Yeah, this is the one when Bishop did this. Yeah, because I had the same one. So. Okay. So you got the new one? It's called Word Where at the top it says the role of faith on 56? Oh, yeah, by the Yeah. Word, yeah, role of faith should be at the top of 56. Oh, I, I downloaded my iPad. What I will do is I will yes. photograph the pages and I'll send them out to you. Okay. That'll work. I'll take a picture and send them out. So, real quick, oh, okay. this is a reminder. Please keep singing in the spirit. Um, look at Psalms um, and uh, continue to meditate on those. For those of you guys who are on the worship team or worship leaders, um, know the scriptures that parallel the songs so you can have the context in you. Um, even when uh, um, Lauren was giving admonishment at a certain point, a sweet spot in the service, that's always a perfect part, spot just to sing your prayers um, and take it a little bit deeper. It's a, a, a flirting with prophetic singing, but it, I promise you, <clears throat> people have an expectation that people will just be worshiping the Lord and say, Glory to God, and certain things. But when you start singing a prayer, it commands the attention of the listener, and it gives me the opportunity to really partner in the group. And that's what we're trying to shoot for as well. Can I comment on that? Yeah. Um, so, not last Saturday night service, but the Saturday night service before that, I was asked to pray. Uh, and this was during sound check, and yes. I sang my prayer. And I just closed my eyes and I was just walking back and forth and just God really started to move in me. Like, I didn't know if he was moving the room, but he was moving in me. Was it true, Judah? And um, yeah. everyone just came like in there just stop what like, they're what's doing. happening? But I knew because we were in the same place. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, but do you see? Like, but did I lie though? Does it not? It's like, is the Lord just wants us to engage and that engaging is an engagement of faith. Because you took a chance. You said, I'm going to just do this. And you jumped up there. And sure enough, the Lord comes in and he inhabits that. The problem sometimes is when we get into our ruts, of which everybody complains about. We recognize when we're in a rut and we're trying to get out of it. Well, you get out of it by faith. Yeah. <clears throat> you got to take a chance. Jesus, we thank you. 
be glorified in our hearts. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about worship. Amen. Mm. You guys have a good night. Mm.